No, no, it wasn't. I didn't use this for churning pockets. Dickhead. Good evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I used on the bike whilst I'm riding to do my videos. So, camera, um, how I get the audio, everything else like that. I'll be going over all the equipment that I use, and then I will be showing you a quick what I use to edit and how I edit my videos very, very quickly. Um, this video should only be about 10 minutes long in total. Hopefully, it might be of use to some of you if you're looking at getting into it yourself or you want to know what I'm using. Anyway, let's get on with it, and I've got all the stuff on the table behind me right here. Whilst editing this video, I've noticed I do say okay quite a bit. Right, so this might be a bit shaky footage because I'm to do it with my phone. Okay, well, what we can see here is my helmet, my shark squall helmet, the one with all the LEDs and stuff in. Okay, the microphone placement in here. Okay, I don't know if you're going to see this with this light. It is right up in there. Okay, that's where the mic is. You have my Sona 20S intercom. Okay, put that on the helmet for now. Now I've shown it. Okay, and then the camera is the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. Okay, um, standard GoPro. I use 1080p 60 frames a second in wide mode for the vlogging. But what I use to get my audio into the GoPro is this little badger here which is a Senna GP10 Bluetooth backpack for GoPro okay all that does okay is if I can get it on one handed clips onto the back of the GoPro and then this little connector goes between the GoPro and the battery pack and it, basically the GoPro now sees that as an external microphone. That receives your intercom. It receives your microphone. And if you've also got somebody else in the intercom with you, it receives their voice and puts that into it. If you receive a phone call, it will automatically mute itself so it doesn't record your phone calls. Uh, and yeah, that's, all that, that's what that does. It just basically takes the audio from your, your speakers in your intercom and your microphone straight into the GoPro. Quite simple, when you've got your intercom turned on, which I don't know if it'll... Oh, come on, can't even do this one-handed now. Hello. Don't know if you can hear that when it says hello. But then, when I turn the GoPro back on, Phone connected. it should. GoPro pack connected. UHG voice mode. There you go. So that's it connected up to the intercom, that's the message you get. It does come with its own case for the Bluetooth backpacks, because obviously it makes your GoPro bigger, but it allows you to fit them in and seal it up. It comes with two different backs. There's this back that I have on it, so I can still get to the switches, and then it has one that's a solid back that you cannot get to the switches on. Okay. And the way I mount is there. I literally have it mounted right onto the front of my helmet. And tilted back. Something like that. So it gives a bit more of a realistic view of what I see when I'm out on the road. And obviously there's the battery for the GoPro that's not in it at the moment. But yeah, that's everything that I use when I'm out. And that's what my helmet looks like with everything on. So yeah, that's that's my setup for being out on the road vlogging. Um, when I'm doing other video stuff, I do use other things as well. So I will show you some of them now. So for some of my videos, I do use this as well, which is my DSLR. It's a Canon EOS 1200, as you can see there. Um, I have two different lenses. I've got this one, which is a 18 to 55. And then I do have a 75 to 300, but I don't use the 75 to 300 for videos, I only use that for photographs. 
Um, but yeah, I'll use that as well. That's what I used to do the very in the intro for this video. Uh, I also used this camera when I did my 2017 update video at the start of the year. This is the camera that I used that you got the viewpoint from. I had that set up, just aiming straight at me. Did the job, did what I needed. Anyway, that's pretty much all the kit that I use. Let's go upstairs to the computer where I do my editing and I'll go through what programs I use for that and how I go about getting the footage to the way that I like to have it to work with. And I will see you upstairs. Boom! Here we are with the computer. This is where all my editing happens. I'm gonna swap over now so you'll get to see what's happening on the screen um, while I run through a few things what I do when I'm editing. Hopefully this will help. Right, now we're back at the computer. Okay, I'll show you what I do with the GoPro stuff. Um, that's quick and easy. Um, I'll get into it now. So, this is the GoPro Quick. When you import the stuff off your GoPro, this is where it shows up. Okay, um, I'm just going to pick any random clip because I can't be bothered going through it properly. So, I'll select that one. Open in Studio. And it's put my GoPro Studio on the other screen. That's nice of it. Select the clip. Find a bit that you want. Say it's. Oh, is this is this the bit that's actually got me? Yeah, this is the bit with me having a bit of a to do with someone. That guy there <laughs> on his phone. Um, so I wanted from that bit to I don't know that bit. Just a few seconds. Advanced settings. Select what you want there. That's what I use personally. Okay. Sometimes I'll use remove fish eye. Sometimes I won't. Um, I normally do to be honest. Okay, and you. Add to conversion list, and what this will do is it will put them wherever this here says. Okay, I have different folders for all the different videos I'm doing. That's how I do mine. Then you do convert all, and it'll convert it, and then you can edit it and export it. I'll quickly convert it, and then we'll come back because it's gonna take. That's it. Now it's gonna have done it by the time I've finished talking. Eh, I don't know. So that's done. Then you go to edit, I always cancel that, drag your clip down, you can change all the stuff over here that you want, um, I mess with this depending on the footage, purely depends on the footage, add your fade ins and fade outs if you want to, Okay, I do most of my fade ins and fade outs in Sony Vegas, um, so I don't generally do them on these, um, do what you need to do there, file, export movie, I use this one, okay, that is what I use when I do mine. The YouTube one uh, gives it a little bit rate so you lose some of the quality. Um, that one is fine. If you want to, you can use uh, Archive Edit, which makes the files a lot bigger. Once, because I'm uploading to YouTube, once I've done these, I don't bother with using that one because of the space. I'll use that. Because YouTube compresses your video anyway once you upload it, so you'll lose, you're not gaining anything. Hit export, select where you want it to export to, give it a file name, save. Okay, once you've done that, you can then import them into Sony Vegas. So I'm going to close all of this. And this, and I should have then have Vegas. This is another old file of mine that I've already done. This video is already public. Um, you'll have already seen this one if you watch my channel. Uh, what you can see is the way I have mine laid out. I have my logo, which is in the top right corner. Boom, there, all the time. That's my top track, just so it appears above everything then, with its level turned right down. All that is is a PNG file, so it's a transparent background. That's my intro. I have a template file that literally has these on it already. That is just like a little intro, one clip. And then what you can see above all of these lines are is where I have split the video um, and stitched it together. So. Cutting out bits where I'm not talking or where I'm not making sense or where I say things wrong. That's that bit that is that was done with my phone. <laughs> um which is showing up here. That was my phone mounted onto my phone mount just looking back at me recording. And then the main bit here was taken from my GoPro. What I did to do that was line the two up, um the two full videos up, and then went through splitting them. So that they've matched up together. 
job done. Slide them around, put stuff where you want it. Um, I've got audio tracks. Um, they're, they're the ones that have minimised, so you can't see them as much. Line it all up, bish, bash, bosh. Once you're happy with your final product, then you go to File and Render As. And these are the two I use. Um, I've actually used this one more. The top one was one that I tried. It didn't seem to give as good quality for me personally, from what I wanted. So this is what I use. If I hit Customize, I can go through the settings. A lot of them are the same as the standard um, Windows Movie Video 1080. Uh, so you got that one. Choose your audio, video, quality variable bitrate, format Windows Media 9, uh, pixel aspect ratio square. I did have to change that for some reason. It was done to that one and I didn't like it. So I changed it to square. Frame rate 60, quality 86, gives good enough quality for what I'm what I'm doing. Okay. Keep the file size reasonable, good enough quality. Bitrate, don't touch. Index file summary, don't touch. Project. That's basically it. <laughs> you do that, you hit render, and then it'll save it to where you've told it to save it to. Once that's done, your video's then ready for you to upload and to do what you need to do. Hope this has been helpful for some of you. If it has, great. Give me a thumbs up. Give it a like. If not, if you've not liked it, dislike it. Let me know why. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share the video, whatever. I just thought this might be an interesting one to do for people to see my process, like what I use to do my recording and what I do afterwards. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Until next time, ride safe, keep it shiny side up, and I will catch you later. I hate recording. Oh, just had a message. Have you finished recording yet? No.